And we're back. All right, so now we have this guy in our scene ready to be animated. Um, and he has a lot of cool controls, like he has squash and stretch automatically in there for us. Um, and we're just going to be kind of... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and you, you can you can get a lot of person out. Like, look, he looks kind of coy right here. He's like, hmm, you know, like he, he has a lot of personality. So I, I think it's gonna be a fun guy to to sort of animate. He also has um, this tail attachment right here, and it's gonna be really nice. See, I just shift selected uh, or uh, control shift selected all of the tail controls, and this is fantastic for for kind of practicing overlap. If you don't recall. Overlapping action is, um, think about leaves in the wind or like a, a, a rope kind of dangling f off a cliff. Like if, if a, a breeze comes by, it's going to sway, right? It's going to kind of, the, 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 these front ones are going to turn first and these back ones are going to follow through. Um, and that's, that's pretty much overlapping action. Uh, but we want to get this jump in there first. So, all right, first step, drag select over every control, every control right there. And then we're going to press the all-powerful keying button, S, boom. It's going to set a key down here. And you'll notice that on my screen, it's super thick. That is a very thick key. And I really like it for, for these tutorials uh, because it, it makes it evident which frames have keys on them for you guys. Uh, if you are looking for that option, if you want that, you can always go to Preferences um, or Windows, Setting Preferences, Preferences. You can always go in here and you can always find, uh, let's see, is it under Display? No, no, it's under, it's gotta be Time Slider, yeah. So key, under Time Slider in here, under Key Tick Size, normally, I think it defaults at one, Look how freaking tiny that is. You have to have a, a monocular to, to see that up close. So let's go to 5x. Boom, you got that. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Boom. So now we have a one key on this guy, right? And then I'm going to... I'm, I'm just going to give myself a good amount of time, you know? Because um, I just want him to do a little short hop, you know? And... Let's have him hop. Let's have him about to hop right here. So I'm going to set another key, and then let's get him going through the air. Now you might want to just you might be like, oh, let's just go to my move tool and let's move all of it. But oh man, you have every control selected. <laughs> now he's become mangled as a result. Uh, what we need to do instead is find which control kind of moves all of him. Now we could animate this with either this control or all of these controls. Uh, let's see, all of these things. Yeah, there we go. So the top and the bottom, see how they kind of control each half of this guy? So we could do it either way, really. And, uh, but I, I, I find that this control is only pretty much useful if you're doing like uh, something within a certain space like if you were doing a walk cycle then you could you could animate that walk cycle with these controls independently of this control and then after it's looping with these controls after you had a walk cycle looping with these controls you could then just kind of move this throughout the scene and then he would scrub along you know as long as that they were it, they were matched to the cadence of the feet that would be possible, but I, I find it to be much more intuitive to animate like this, especially for the first time starting out. Um, so let's go here, and let's get a little bit of a squash down, right? Let's get this guy ready to hop. So he's going to he's gonna bring that down. He's going to bring this guy back right there. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And then we're going to pop out of this. Whoa! So I'm just scrubbing forward a little bit on the timeline, right? Like you want to be, you want to make sure you're going forward in time when you're when you're doing the next frame. Otherwise, you're gonna get a lot of weirdness. He's gonna he's gonna want to start moving forward. Like if you were back here scrubbing like on frame eight, he it wouldn't be right. You know, you have to get your key frames at the right time. So here we go. 
Wow. See that? It's going a little bit, it's feeling a little bit slow, but we can adjust the timing later and I'll show you how to do that. And let's get this guy flying through the air. Let's get them. Let's get this kind of under portion set up. Make sure you're setting those keys on each of those frames. And uh, this timing is probably atrocious. Don't get me wrong. But we're just trying to get those key poses in there. All right. Nice, nice, nice. And let's make sure. I usually like to, at this point, or probably before this, I like to go to poly modeling and just make a plane in here. And just scale that up. I like scaling that bad boy up. Right? There we go. Now we got some. Whoa. Oh man, look at that. He's looking like Michael Jordan with moon gravity. He has way it's way too slow, way too much hang time. Uh, but that's fine. Um, I would also like to oh wait, am I on my other all right, so uh, for default uh, key binds, like it's going to be very important that you are able to quickly uh, go through your keys on, on the timeline, right? Like if you want to see your key poses right here, you want to be able to quickly do that. I have set those, uh, I have set uh, key left to A, I've set go to next key on to D. So they're like right under my hand right there. It's very intuitive. And very intuitive. I really suggest that you do that. Um, if you're looking for the the buttons for that on the UI, I don't recommend this because it's pretty slow. But yeah, you can go step back one key, step forward one key, uh, I believe step back at one frame right here step forward one frame so yeah like you can you can do all that I set step forward and step back to T and Y on here um, and A and D for that but that's just a matter of preference um, if you're really interested in getting your own hotkeys you can go to Windows settings preferences hotkey editor whoa it's taking a while right there and then you can go to this and duplicate it and then See, I renamed it to Mike and Keybinds, and pretty much everything is default besides those, uh, and one other button that I'll show you guys later. Uh, but yeah, the default hotkey for these though is period and comma, but like that's all the way across the keyboard. It's pretty annoying and laborious to reach all the way over there. Um, that just sounds like the definition of a first world problem being laborious to reach across a keyboard. <laughs> so. Anyways, we're going to um, we're going to make this contact with the ground. There we go. And all right. And I, I want to get like a more exaggerated sort of landing pose. We want we want to stretch him out, right? So now, see how his. See how his head leads right there, and then he's getting that body in front of him to kind of contact the ground here. If we stretch him out, we can make that. And then this is going to zero out. I want this to I want this to be planted on the ground exactly like frame one, right? So if we go right here, and then rotate X. I just want to zero that out. And I want to zero out translate Y as well. Boom. So he is snatched to that ground. Because I know that all this is at one ground level. If if you were at some sort of arbitrary height with this ground plane, or if he was hopping up some stairs, you'd just have to visually align it, which is definitely in our repertoire, being artists. Um, and let's see here. Now we have to we have to get him kind of back to this pose, right? So he's jumping through. And this is him landing. And afterwards, so I want to make sure we get this stretched out pose. Oops, I accidentally keyed our floor. If you want to stop selecting the floor, you can always add it to a display layer and then turn it to a reference right there. And uh, so now we go in. 
and let's get him kind of squashed down. See that? Let's get him looking like jelly. There we go. And then I'm going to zero out his Y. And this is, I'm going to get this lined up with that. See, the benefit of having animated with this would have been that we could just zero out all of our controls if he were still because we we would have been animating him in like in the space of this control so instead he'd be like over there but this control would be over here you know so we could just cleanly zero out all his controls but like I said I find it to be a little bit more intuitive like it, it's harder to get these like default poses back but um I, I find it to be a lot more easy to do, um, the, or easy to comprehend w when we were animating the first time. So there we go. See that? Okay. The timing is all messed up, completely messed up. Um, but, you know, most of it's there. Accidentally act activated walk tool. If you ever, if you ever press Alt-X, you'll see walk tools activated. Just press Alt-X again to toggle out of it. Um, I used to just restart Maya whenever I did that until I decided to stop being a caveman. <laughs> so yeah, so now I have like my key poses, right? And I want to make sure every control of this guy is keyed on those frames. It'd be, if, if you don't and you animate something on like one of these frames, you'll see it slowly interpolate. Like if, see how I have one key over here on this middle control. I have to get like a if I have to get a specific pose on this, even though I don't think this is an appealing pose, um, you'll see that that control has kind of been pulled aside and backwards throughout all of this. Um, let's just push it really far just so you guys can see it. See how see how much it's affecting. So what we in order to prevent that and to save future heartache, we can just go in here, highlight every control while we're still in this kind of blocking phase. And we can just go down our timeline to each key and just press S. I'm just pressing S on all of these, right? Boom, boom. So now we have a key on every control for every single one of our key frames, our key poses, right? Now whenever I move stuff, I know that at least most of the animation has been retained. Like these are kind of acting as pins for our animation. Like these, these are pinning each control to that point in time, right? And that's what this that's what these red highlights mean is that they're, they're they're pinned to that location and rotation and scale at that time. Uh, now uh, most of the time you don't animate with scale though. There's, that's I, I've noticed that uh, rigs specifically have to be like uh, built to support that and a lot a lot aren't. Um, but I mean that, how often are you just kind of scaling up one part of the character? You definitely could for animated shots, but uh, I find body mechanics and movement is just much more important. But now, so we have the problem of this guy having way too much hang time. Look at this bad boy. Oh, he's up there way too long. What the fuck? So let's go in. And this this jump is not snappy enough. What the hell? So what we need to do is retime this, right? And I'll show you a few ways to do that. Uh, a lot of people like the graph editor for this. So if you go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. Ooh, we got our good friend, the graph editor. Um, I know for when you're first starting out, everyone hates the graph editor. Graph editor makes no sense. It speaks of sacrilege. But I'm here to tell you, he's, he, he has all the answers. It's just a little bit hard to tease him out of. Um, you'll notice that when you select a control, it changes which uh, curves it's displaying. So it's like displaying the top head curve. So if I change translate Y on this, let's go back to keyframe. If I change translate Y on this, you can see that it's changing in the viewport. And the way that I'm doing that is I just drag over the key. You can even drag over sets of keys. That's one of the hugest uh, benefits of using the graph editor. And I'm just shift middle click dragging while I'm in move mode up here. Because if you're in scale mode and you do shift, middle click, drag, see how it scales out that? That's also super important, too. Like, 
for some nice detail stuff. Like say you wanted to make a curve more exaggerated like that, like that you can just scale it up like this. Like that's super sick. Um, it's it's a huge advantage. And I don't expect you to completely comprehend the graph editor right now, but uh, eventually like it's gonna become second nature to you guys. Sorry, just drinking water. All right. So to retime this, we can also just select every control and notice how all of our, our keys line up on these points, right? That each correspond with our keys. So we can just left click drag and then press W for move. I can just shift middle click dr drag left and right, right? Because along this part, uh, like the further we go down this graph, that's the further in time we're going, right? We're warping through time here, baby. So that, yeah, it's pretty important to understand that in order to kind of like start to decipher what this graph editor means. So this is always time. Going left and right is always time. It's exactly like scrubbing any sort of uh, like dope sheet on a uh, on like a 2D animated program. You know, it's that same concept. And so that's one way of retiming these. So if I wanted this hop to be faster, I would go. I would look at the space between like that that squash frame and that jump frame. Like we got a lot of keys in there. We have like what? First key's on 16, next key's on 24. It's like eight frames. We could cut that in like half, maybe even more. So we do that, we left click drag, shift, middle click drag. Right? So we got all those there. Uh, another way that I find a little bit more intuitive, so I'll usually keep my graph editor open. And then what I do is I just shift left click drag on this timeline because I know I want this, I, I know I want this uh, scale to, to kind of shrink down. Um, but let, let me let me refresh this. I had some channels in here selected, so it, it was only going to scale those. But if I if I go in here and I shrink, because I want I want this the gap between these keys, right? The time between these keys to shrink. So it, what we can do is if we can just move every key in there. Wow, look at that. Just squish that. So now, wah, oh, and then you can see that the rest of this jump makes no sense now. Like, look at, he anticipates, oh, and then he springs out of there, but then it just slowly moves, right? So what we need to do is speed this up. It's all about timing, guys. It's all about timing. Timing and key poses. Like, those are like, quite possibly the two most important um, principles of animation, timing and key poses, guys. So I'm just squishing that. Um, I'm squishing up all of the that time in there. I'm going to just show you guys me doing it on this timeline. Let's let's look at our animation first. So now, whoa, see him. He kind of springs out, goes fast, and he kind of lands slow and not very convincingly. So what we need to do is if we zoom out here. And grab all of our keys and shift middle click drag right here and you'll see that they, they updated on the timeline down here too let me control Z that and I, if I drag those into position and let's do one less and let go see how it updates there because I'm moving all the keys it's the same thing guys same thing and then I find this this bob very unconvincing. I want that to be a bit snappier. Let's move the time up there. All right. So now we have a little, a little bit of a hopping anim. I'm gonna shrink just this overall time slider here. There we go. So now, it's just going to be a lot of kind of messing with these poses. We can also adjust tangents. I'm not sure if I quite want to show you that. If, if you're feeling experimental, then I will show you. Um, we have a problem right now where it's kind of smoothing into that landing, right? It's smoothing in there. 
uh, you shouldn't be easing into like that's a, that should be a forceful impact right like imagine throwing like a racket ball against the wall like it's, it's not going to ease in right before it gets to the wall like no that thing's going to shoot in there and just be so fast throughout that so you can see on my curves that there's a little bit of a little bit of an, a smooth in there that's what we want to get out because when you're leaving the ground and you're hitting the ground, you're going to be going with as much force as possible. I want you guys to be thinking about physics as well when we're doing this. Uh, and the way we can do that, like, see, see how like this Y curve, which is how high in the air it is. See how that Y curve kind of you gently, like it, it just smoothly goes in there? That's because of the tangents. We can change these, right? I hope you remember this from, from the first course. Uh, you can change these to whatever. Look at that. Look at these sharp tangents now. Let's see what this looks like. See how kind of woo woo wobbly like moves wobbly wobbly uh, hmm. it moves the air in a wobbly style. I don't like that. It's because it's like moving up faster than the head control. It's 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 chaos. Let's get this out of here. Um so we're doing uh, we're looking at auto right there. I usually keep most of my tangents in auto because I just, it just makes a little sense. Um, it, it solves a lot of the basic problems that you'd have. If you want to get a little bit experimental, you can do spline. This is really good for doing some little uh, automatic overlap action at the end. Like think about if you threw like a, a punch or like when when even this guy lands, like how he kind of jelly uh, gelatinously. Gelatinous, man, there's no way to, there's no adverb for that. Um, he kind of, boom, he has that little little overlap in there. Kind of squishes down with that, right? So it, that, splines are good for that. We don't need them in this situation, though. Uh, we need, what we need is a mix, right? We want this guy to, to follow the principle of arcs as well, right? Arcing. So... In animation, you have movement that has to be comprised of smooth arcs across the board. Smooth arcs. Um, and in order to sort of get that, we're going to need this to be in a smooth arc at the top. But it needs to sharply leave the ground. That's why it's very. That's why a lot of people show the bouncing ball for the first animation, or, or for, for their first, you know, sort of assignment. See that? So now, now this bottom is leaving the ground faster. Um, it's leaving the ground so fast that it's it's, it's kind of catching up to the head a little bit, like in this area. And I want to get that out. I want I'd like it to uh, I'd like the head to be springing forward in this area faster than the the body. We can fix that with more keys. I also want it to be a bit snappier, right? Sue me. I just want a little bit of a poppy animation. So let's. What we're gonna do? If we want, if we want this jump to like kind of pop more, like whoop, have more hang time, feel more stylish, feel more get some of that pizzazz in there. If we're gonna do that, what we need is uh, a few more keys in here. I'm gonna press S right there for one key at 23, and let's just get this to be a nice smooth, uh, nice cool arc. Actually, let's try this. There we go. Now. I'm going to kind of even this out with the other side of that. Now if we raise both these sides up, look, look at this. Look at this arc we have. Ooh, it's got a big hill in there going. Let's see what that looks like. Might be a bit too much. I can downgrade that a little bit. But then also, we need to start getting this head involved in here. We've been only keying this bottom. I want this head to be popping. I want this head to be popping, dude. All right. Whoa. So this frame, I want it to be a little bit more stretched. Let's get a little bit more jump into that. And notice how immediately that back kind of catches up to it. He loses a slight amount of size here. I want to kind of get that back in there. Whoa. Let's get... Let's get this kind of crossing over. See how that feels just a lot better? 
We could even stretch this out right there. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to be making a lot of noises when I animate, just so you know. And I kind of want him to lean a little bit forward, like he's... Because if, if we look at the arc of that is that his head is taking, kind of goes in at that angle, and then hits the bottom, and then just kind of goes up. I'd like to see this kind of... Like that, that momentum didn't go away. See so, kind of catches himself with that. Boom. 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 Say, say you wanted this jump to go higher. Right? In that case, we're just going to grab both the bottom and the top. And this is where the, the huge strength of the, of the graph editor comes in. Uh, we want this jump to go higher, right? If we were to try to fix that with this small like timeline only down here, it'd be help. You'd have to adjust this key, this key, this key, this key, this key. If you're working with mocap data, there'd be a key on literally every one of these frames. Every single one. What you need to do is just go to the graph editor, dude. Boom. Pop open that translate Y. Pop open the other translate Y, right? Because we're, we're using two controls right there. And you can see each different like Y axis of these two controls. Like this is so sick to me. Look at that. You can see like the, the, the head is this one, right? Because the, the body starts hopping on that clean curve right there. But the head, we're kind of just going free ball on it right there. But I, I love this. This is so it's so fun to see that like this is how it gets interpreted inside the computer. Uh, but what we can do is just uh, if I press W, shift middle click drag right there you see it's dragging both of them up see that that's a bit of that's a little bit of a higher uh, that's a little bit of a higher jump right there now I feel like he my, my guy kind of loses a little bit too much volume throughout here he's a little bit like look at his base pose. I'd want him to be in that pose up here. I want him to be looking like that. So let's get him. Let's get him like that. There. You guys, don't worry if it's not perfect. We're not going. We're not going for perfection right now. We're trying to get our bearings again. We want to know what Maya is all about again. Whoa. I might even delay this. I might delay this a little bit. Right there. Boom. Nice. Nice. So I'm I'm happy with that for my my a time being. We could completely go in and polish this up even more, but I, I, I kind of want to get everyone moving a little bit a little bit faster, right? So we can definitely polish that up. Um, and the, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you guys next how to kind of do the overlap of the tail in the next video. So get ready for that.